Hello, welcome to this week's edition of Phototube. We are very happy to have Hong Liu with us, who is going to tell us about emergent times in holography, as you can read from the slide. And um, Daniel also just posted the slides, so anybody, everybody has access to the slides on the chat. Right, Hong, the stage is yours. Okay, good. Thank you for the invitation. Um, so let me just hide the panel so that is good. Okay, yeah, so I will be talking about some uh, recent work uh, with my student, Sam Lutheser. Um, so um, yeah, so whenever we talk about quantum gravity, one of the first issue we encounter is so-called the problem of time. Um, in quantum mechanics, time is absolute. We, um, yeah, we just, it's essential to describe evolution. But in, in GR, most of the time, actually time is meaningless because time is just a coordinate, can be changed by arbitrary uh, gauge diffeomorphism transformations. So that creates a sharp uh, a conflict between really how should we think about, say, time evolution in the diffeomorphism environment the way in quantum gravity. <clears throat> so the situation is actually better. So here I say most of the time, because sometimes the situation is better. So one situation is in, in, in ADS. In ADS, which has a time-like boundary, and uh, because the gauge transformation, by definition, they go to zero at infinity. So, um, so in, in ADS, that, uh, there is actually a, an absolute asymptotic time, which does not suffer from any, say, uh, uh, ambiguity uh, due to uh, diffeomorphism. And of course, this underlies the, uh, the success of ADSFT, and this asymptotic time is identified <clears throat> with the boundary time, which of course, it's, a, it's an absolute uh, uh, concept. So that, of course, is also the reason why quantum gravity in space times of other asymptotics appear much more difficult, okay? because we don't have such, a, say, absolute asymptotic time. But even in ADSFT, we can still, there are still many puzzles related to how, we, how do we understand the bulk time evolution, okay? So even though there's a, a, a sensible asymptotic time, but, but most of the time, yeah, but we are interested in the bulk physics. So, uh, um, so how do we understand the bulk time evolution? Can we actually understand such evolution in a diffeomorphism environment way? So right now we don't really have a framework for dealing with that. Okay. So um, there are situations which the story is simpler, say if the say if the corresponding state in the boundary theory or or the corresponding box space time is actually time translation variance. So in such a case, then then there's a time translation symmetry, and then there's a preferred slice slicing of the box geometry, and indeed uh, uh, you can actually extend this boundary time to the interior of the bulk. And, uh, and uh, um, we can talk about this time evolution sensibly. <clears throat> but in the general time dependent case, then the story is far from clear. Okay. Of course, you can choose some gauge, talk about time evolution, but then you don't know whether that's actually uh, uh, the information you get is actually the of the environment, uh, whether they are really physical or, or not. Okay. So, so, so a simpler example, which are in between this most general case and the, the time independent case is this uh, uh, geometry of internal black hole. So this is one of the best understood example of the duality. And so, so, so here is the Penrose diagram for internal black hole in ADS, which has been conjectured to be dual to two copies of your CFT in the sum of your double state. Okay, so there's no interaction between the CFT, but they're in the entangled state. So this geometry is interesting. It's because outside, there's no global killing vector, okay? But outside of the horizon, there is a global, uh, 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 there's a, 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 a killing, time-like killing vector outside the horizon. So, so we can actually extend the boundary time uh, 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 using this uh, 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 killing vector to the region outside horizon. Okay, so 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 outside horizon, the physics uh, uh, is straightforward to understand from the boundary theory. 
but but this time stops at the horizon and they become yeah so so it's very difficult how to understand the reading beyond the horizon say in the future and the past future okay so so that creates many mysteries uh, um, for example, uh, how do we really describe this future and the past region intrinsically in the boundary theory? How do we describe cross collide time evolution? Okay. And uh, how do we understand the emergence of horizons and associated causal structure in the boundary theory? And uh, how do we say, say, even though these two CFTs are long interacting with each other, okay, but but in the box, we can actually have observers fall through the horizon and they interact in the future region. Okay. So how do we understand such kind of interactions from the boundary theory? Okay, even though there's no interaction between them. Good. So so before talking about how to address these issues, so let me just briefly review what we currently know about BAC, uh, a boundary descriptions of BAC evolutions. Okay. So, so the most straightforward evolution is the uh, you did HR minus HL. So, so HR is the Hamiltonian say of the right CFT, HL is the Hamiltonian of the left CFT. So, so this uh, evolution is well known in the bulk corresponding to the uh, Swashield evolution in the bulk gravity. So if you have a Cauchy slice, T equal to zero Cauchy slice, then under this evolution, just give you a lot of, yeah, it's corresponding to a standard, uh, a swashio time evolution uh, on the gravity side. So this evolution is completely smooth on the gravity side and, uh, 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 and only lies outside the horizon. Okay, only uh, uh, evolves a uh, region outside the horizon. You can also consider some other combination, say of the boundary Hamiltonian, for example, HR plus HL, but actually any other, the combination of the Hamiltonian of the HR and the HL, uh, when you act on the geometry, actually it's not well defined. Okay, there's always some singular point. For example, if you consider HR plus HL, so that will create this kind of evolution. And then there's a kink at the horizon, which is a singular, okay. And similarly with any other combination of HR plus HL. So in some sense, the only, if you use the original HR and the HL, then the original, uh, the only smooth evolution is this HR minus HL. Okay. Anyway, but but we are interested in understanding. Yeah, again, this HR plus HL, they only involve, they only take you reaching outside the horizon. They don't take you reaching inside the horizon. So, uh, so what we are uh, we are interested in understanding is the cross cut uh, like evolution, so that you take the initial Cauchy slice can take you smoothly to some other Cauchy slice, which can cross the horizon. Okay, we want to understand how you can actually fall into the, say, fall through the horizon and understand uh, a story yeah, behind the horizon. And the sense that the original Hamiltonian can no longer be used, yeah, does not, yeah, the original Hamiltonian does not generate this kind of evolution. So, so that's, uh, this kind of evolution has to be emergent. Okay. So the goals of this talk is to understand, is to give you an intrinsic boundary constructions, say of this kind of cross like evolutions, okay? And also to, uh, to see how the uh, horizon and associated causal structure uh, 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 emerges intrinsically in the boundary theory. Okay, so here is a, a plan. So I will first outline the main results and then, then I will tell you how we do this construction and the important motivation for this construction is actually just entanglement structure in standard, yeah, in ordinary relativistic quantum field theory. And in particular, this so-called the uh, uh, type three by volume algebra. So that will provide inspiration for understanding this emerging time uh, in the black hole geometry. Yeah, in particular, we use a structure called half-sided modular inclusion. And, and then I will talk about how to do such kind of construction uh, from the boundary. Yeah, then if I have time, then we'll uh, 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 have some discussions. So do you have any questions? <clears throat> Okay, 
Okay, good. <clears throat> Sorry, was there any question? Okay. 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 So, sorry. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? Hi. Hi, Hong. Yeah. Hi. Um, uh, I guess my camera is not working. Okay. Yeah, I do have a question to the previous slide. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. So in the third picture, um, couldn't you argue? And I think this goes back to Unru that. Across the horizon, you can do an say if you want to calculate something like Green's functions in the bulk. Yeah, you could do an analytic continuation across the horizon, and then uh, again an analytic continuation on the other horizon, right. and construct the, the the function you're interested in just by analytic continuation. After all, the full Kruskal diagram is just constructed by analytic continuation. Yeah, and then you know Unru also showed that basically the functions which you get can be interpreted as Green's functions being at finite temperature and the temperature is basically encoded in this in this analytic continuation around the horizon, right? Which you right. could interpret as an evolution in imaginary time. Yeah. Which then basically reproduces sort of, you know, gives you a picture like on the schwinger keldisch contour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. 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 But, but the key here, yeah, this is a very good question. But the key here, is that we don't want to use this bulk structure. So in your description, you already used this geometry in the essential way. So you already yeah. used that there's a horizon, you can analyze it, continue through the horizon, et cetera. So, so here we want to really see how the horizon emerges. And we really want to see how the, uh, uh, the, uh, this kind of Kruska evolution emerges. We don't want to use it as an input. Okay, I guess my question is uh, from this, if, if you do this in the, uh, wouldn't it then uh, follow that it's sort of um, from the boundary point of view, uh, it's isomorphic to, to evolution sort of at finite temperature? No, no, no? If, you do, uh, if you do evolution at finite temperature, yeah, uh, you can do arbitrary combination of your HR plus HL, your level gets. Uh, uh, yeah, but that, that as, you, as you pointed out, that would not, uh, that uh, HR plus HL, I think that would clash with my analyticity criterion. I think yeah, only HR right. minus HL would, would be consistent with analyticity, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so you want to construct something which actually can do this. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 so the question, what is that something? Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so this is a, a, a very good question indeed. So so if you have the uh, yeah yeah, I should also mention in the past there are many calculations say of boundary observables. Say if you calculate certain correlation functions, uh, entanglement entropy, two-sided entanglement entropy, complexity, etc. In doing those calculations, we used region behind the horizon all the time. Okay. Uh, we use those geometry behind the horizon all the time. But again, uh, those calculations, first is that you assume such a geometric structure. Uh, uh, and secondly, uh, 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 those calculations, even though you use the geometry behind the horizon, but you never really see where does this cross car evolution come from? Okay, uh, uh, whether there's an emerging the cross car time or, or or you never see some kind of horizon structure. So yeah, you never see an emerging horizon structure. Okay, you just somehow uh, in your calculation in the intermediate step, you use that kind of uh, uh, the, uh, inside the horizon geometry. So, so here we want to really just want to understand where is this analytic structure in the gravity side come from? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So, so let me just first tell you the results. Yeah, first, let me just emphasize one very simple point, even though it's not appreciated by many uh, uh, by people. So if you want to describe this kind of evolution, okay, you have to use something which couple left and the right degrees freedom in a non-trivial way. Okay, so as, essentially we don't have a choice. First is that we, we know that available choice of HR plus HL or any combination of them will not do the job. And the secondly, if you want to describe, say, anything in the future region, 
which is in causal contact with both left and the right, then you must, somehow the evolution must involve the, the left and right degrees freedom in a non-trivial way, okay? So now the question is how does this kind of structure naturally emerges, say from, say from the theory in the thermal field double state? Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, um. Okay, so, 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 so that's the, um, yeah, so let me just uh, outline the results. So what we, we will show actually they exist evolution operators on the boundary theory, which you can construct intrinsically, which satisfy the following properties. Okay, so, so we can say construct some permission operators and differentiate to, to generate some evolution. And this permission operator will have the following property. So first it involves the both right and left degrees feeling in a highly non-trivial way, okay. And the second, uh, uh, this generator is bounded from below. So, so this is a very important property. So we know normally when we say, you can talk about say uh, uh, unitary say uh, transformations in your, in your quantum mechanics. So what distinguish say a unitary transformation? Yeah, what distinguishes the time evolution from say the unitary transformation corresponding to trans spatial translation or some internal symmetry, et cetera, is that the generator of time translation is bounded from below, okay? And essentially you can view this as a, a, a defining feature, say of time, okay? So here, so this G has this property which qualifies this S has some, has some kind of time, okay? And then, then, then the third aspect is that now if you take an operator, okay, bark operator in the region outside the horizon, okay? So, so here you should interpret. So here we assume we already understand the, the ADSFT for the region outside the horizon, which is, yeah, which we already uh, understand. And, uh, uh, and in particular, any operator say in the region outside the horizon, we can express it using the boundary operator, okay? And uh, uh, yeah, the simplest way, just think about the Bach mode expansion, okay? Bach mode expansion in terms of some A and A dagger. And the A and A dagger, actually you can just interpret it as a boundary operator, okay? So, so any of the Bach operator uh, then can be interpreted say as a, uh, yeah, so, so if you have an operator in the right region, then that can be interpreted as some operator in the CFTR. Okay. Now, if you act, this operator, uh, this evolution operator on the box, say operator, okay? And then you find it can take it inside the horizon for sufficiently large S. Okay, so, so this qualifies this S as some kind of informing time, okay? Some kind of informing time. And in particular, we will find sharp signatures of the horizon. And then the picture we want to advertise is that actually uh, this US can generate this R and L region. Uh, from the, yeah, can generate this future and the past region from this right, uh, right, uh, right and L region. Okay, yeah, so, so the cartoon picture is the following. So if you just think about finite temperature ADSFT correspondence, we have straightforward description of physics in the right region in terms of CFTR. We have physics in the left region in terms of CFTL. But in those discussions, if you just really want to use safe, it's not, yeah. So this internal black hole geometry was a conjecture, but, but just from our mapping between the bulk and the boundary, you don't really directly see whether this R and L region are directly connected or not, whether there's a future and the past region, okay. So what this US does is to generate from this R and L picture, which we assume we already know, okay, the, the full internal black hole space time. And uh, so, so this leads to uh, a emergent, new emergent in falling time. And actually, yeah, we also show we actually have infinite number of choices of such in falling time. So, okay. So, so and by, by construction, these are different morphism invariants. Okay. So now let me just say some features of this evolution. So uh, using a, 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 yeah, using, run over the simplest example we can construct. Okay, can, so. I ask a, can I ask a question? Sure. 
So in in the in the previous slide you had, yeah. Um, so you, you just you you is you exists as a boundary operator. Yeah, that's right. So what is the operator on the left hand side of point three? Is is that a? It's, does it exist on the boundary? Yeah. So yeah. So this is also a boundary operator. Yeah. So this phi x. So x is a point in the box in the right region. Yes. So you interpret this phi x say, as a boundary operator. Okay. Yeah. Then you can now act by this u s, and then you get some other boundary operator. Yes. And the, uh, then you can reinterpret this as some kind of Bach operator. Yeah. But what's the interpretation on the boundary of this other operator? Oh, it's just some complicated operator. It's still just part of your boundary uh, uh, operator algebra. But it, uh, do you, does it have a physical, can you interpret it physically? What uh, you can, you it from? Later we will see it has geometric meaning in the Bach. In the boundary theory, just some complicated operator. For example, just this phi x, original phi x, it's also some complicated operator in the boundary theory. What do you mean? Why can't I take just I don't know, you know, a boson on the boundary and act with u on it? Oh yeah, you can. You can. You will get some other operator. You just get some op uh, other operator. Well, I mean, but okay, but you don't know. You don't have some clean physical interpretation of, of that other operator that you get. Depends on what you mean by clean physical interpretation. Uh, Something uh, that uh, you can uh, interpret without going to the bulk. Uh, 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 so, uh, so I gave you an ink for super yam theory. So in the super yam theory, I have many, many operators. Yes. And I can superpose them in whatever way I want. Yes. Uh, is that enough? I don't know. I mean, I'm just. Uh, I don't know. No, 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 no depend on what you mean by uh, uh, by have physical meaning. I, uh, 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 I have boundary operators. I have a, a, a operator algebra on the boundary, and I can superpose any of. I can superpose this basis of this algebra. Yeah, I will get some operators. No, I, oh, maybe I should wait until later. But I'm, I mean, if this if this phi on the left hand side has some bulk interpretation as as probing the region F and P, the question is whether you can from a boundary point of view, say something about operators that probe the regions F and P. Yeah, 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 uh, uh, right, 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 there is. Yeah, there is some features, yeah. Yeah, there's okay. fun features, but some gross features. It's not the kind of, yeah, it's uh, it's gross features, yeah. Okay, I'll, yeah. I'll wait till later, it's thank good. you. Yeah, yeah, because, because if I just give you a boundary operator, you say, uh, can you assign physical meaning of it? Of course we can, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Yes, yeah, so I think in some sense your question was not quite well defined, but uh, but I can get the sense you want to ask. Uh, uh, I can get the sense you want to ask, but you will see. Maybe you will. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this is the uh, 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 the conceptual picture we want to uh, propose. Okay. So so this kind of U.S. will lead to this kind of picture, uh, the emergence of the future and the past. So. So uh, now let me just give you a special example, which we can construct very, yeah, just simply example, uh, which uh, uh, you can construct explicitly for BTZ. So I want to emphasize BTZ is the simplest example in the sense that the, um, it's the simplest non-trivial example. So you can go to higher dimension, of course, it's more complicated. You can go to lower dimension, then you can go to JT gravity. But in the JT gravity, the, the, the story there is actually controlled by symmetry. So, so in the sense the BTZ is the simplest example, which is not controlled by symmetry. Okay. Good, so, uh, so we, yeah, let me just talk about one particular example, which we can work, uh, work out explicitly, okay. So uh, yeah, right now I'm just telling you the without, I'm not telling you how I got this US. I'm just telling you there's some way to, to construct some kind of US, okay. And this US it turns out to have the following property. Okay, so we act this on some Bach field. So it turns out, say, say let's say do S equal to zero. So this would be identity map. And then when S greater than zero start involve this operator. It turns out that they exist S zero greater than zero, which the following thing happens. For S smaller than S zero, this operator belongs to still right CFT. So this original operator is belongs to the right CFT only in the right region. But turns out there's a sharp S zero 
And when s greater than s zero, this operator belongs to uh, now. Now this uh, 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 now the uh, now there appears a part which depends on the left CFT. Okay, so there's a sharp transition at s equal, uh, s equal to s zero, uh, uh, which degrees freedom in the left CFT appears in this evolution. Okay, so so we interpret this feature, okay, as uh, 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 the boundary feature that uh, that you have a sharp horizon in the box. Okay, so this is something, uh, uh, for example, uh, 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 geometrically you expect in the box. So, so let's look at the point in the boundary, say, say in the right region, which, and because in the right region, this belongs to right CFT. And suppose you have some evolution, be, which take you behind the horizon. But before you cross the horizon, you're still in the right region. And then, then of course you will be in the right CFT. But once you cross the horizon, you will be close or con uh, uh, connect with the left region. And then, then you will start involving the left CFT degrees freedom. So I want to emphasize, yeah, so, so this is exactly what you expect geometrically from the box if you take something behind the horizon. But I want to emphasize this feature is highly, highly unusual from the boundary theory perspective. Okay. So from the boundary theory perspective, you can have the following two situations. So uh, normally you can have the following two situations, normally. Say, say suppose if you take US generated by something like say, say HR plus HL, or just some kind of uh, tensor factorized structure of HR and HL. And then when you act on such kind of phi X, and then you will never generate CFTL. Yeah, because it's trivial, because HL will commute with this phi X. So you will never generate anything in the CFTL, okay. On the, on the other hand, if you take US generated by some operator, which couples non-trivially between CFT and CFL, CFTR and CFTL. And then immediately for S greater than zero, okay, for immediately for any S non-zero, the CFTL will be generated. Okay, the with freedom, yeah, because this US contain both CFTR and CFTL, and, and if you act this immediately for any non-zero S, this will be generated. So here the highly non-trivial thing is that you have a finite interval of this S zero. That somehow you still in the CFTR, but then at some non-zero S zero and the CFTR is generated, okay. So this is the sharp signature of the horizon, okay. And, uh, and actually this signature can be formulated in general quantum systems. We don't even have to talk about uh, our systems with a gravity dual, okay. And you can just formulate it you can formulate a general quantum system, say for some kind of emergent horizon structure. Okay, so so for this so for this reason we actually give a name for this. Say if for any two quantum system, if such kind of US and S zero exist, we say they are causally uh, connectable. Okay, in the sense that, say if you want to simulate quantum gravity in the lab, so that would be the signature you should be looking for. Uh, uh, if you want to see uh, uh, some kind of emergent horizon. Does, does uh, S0 depend on phi? Does S0 depend on which phi? On oh, the phi. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so this is a very good question. So, so S0 will depend on your location, of course, because, the, uh, because where you started with uh, takes different trajectory to fall through the horizon, okay? Uh, uh, so, so S0 will depend on, you will see, will depend on your initial point. So, but whether it will depend on different phi, that I don't know. So presumably it should not depend on phi, okay? Say, say if you start with the same point, if you, yeah, uh, for scalar operator will not depend on phi, okay? But uh, 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 this we know for sure. But for, um, say, if you have, say, vector field or, or tensor field, we haven't studied them. I presumably should not, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, Hunk, maybe you're going to say this, but what, what do I need to know to construct U of S? Um, for, yeah, say, uh, uh, yeah. what do you need to know to construct U and S? Uh, uh, US? Yeah. yeah, I will explain that later because okay. that's, uh, uh, it's a little bit evolved to uh, 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 how to do that. Uh, so that's why I'm telling you the result first. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. Just to to highlight the non-trivial feature of this U.S. And then I will tell you. Yeah, the construction is a little bit. Yeah, involved because it needs to introduce some kind of. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so it turns out for, yeah, so I said I will tell you just one simplest example, okay? So in this one simplest example, it turns out this S0 has very special value, okay? Uh, uh, this S0 has a very special value. Yeah, so, so for this reason, let me just draw the Kruska diagram in the box. So this U and the V axis are Kruska coordinates. Suppose you have, and this U and the V axis are the horizon, okay? So I will suppress the boundary and the singularity. So suppose you start with a point with U0 and V0, say in Kruska coordinates. So now it turns out this S0 is just precisely given by minus U0. So, so in, the, in the right region, this U0 actually have an active sign. So yeah, so, uh, so just like you do a, a Kruska or uh, some kind of translation, okay, uh, uh, across the price. So S0 is just given by mass U0. But the evolution is actually non-local. The, uh, the evolution is in general non-local. So, so if I start with a bar, local operator in X, actually uh, um, the resulting operator is not, cannot be interpreted as a bar, local operator in the box. Okay. But something special happens if you are close to the past horizon and then turns out actually this uh, evolution is local. It just give you a Kruska law translation. So if you're close to the horizon, and the, uh, the action of this US just give you the translation along the U axis. But yeah, but as I said, in general, it, it, it's a non-local translation. But it respects the causal structure, okay? But not only it respects the local uh, causal structure, but actually respect the more general light cone structure. So now let's consider another experiment. So let's imagine you uh, 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 take two operators one in the CFT R and one in the CFT L. And uh, so now let's evolve this uh, CFT R, uh, uh, this operator in the CFT R using this U, and then look at this commutator with this left operator. So, so just from the bulk causality, the, the commutator will be non-zero only when you enter the horizon, uh, any, uh, uh, enter the light cone of this point X2. And uh, so now indeed you will find, e even though this evolution is non-local, non so, so here I just draw a cartoon of this non-local evolution. But again, this evolution behaves, but, the, but it respects the sharp uh, uh, causal structure. Say, say this uh, a commutator turned out to be exactly zero when S is smaller than U1 absolute value plus U2. So this U1 absolute value plus U2 is precisely the the law distance along the Kruska coordinate to go from this point to cross the light cone, okay, of the X2. And then when, then when you uh, greater than that value, then become non zero. So I want to emphasize in our boundary construction, we don't use any structure of the, uh, uh, um, say, Kruska coordinate, et cetera. Uh, uh, and this Kruska coordinate just purely emerges from this boundary construction. And so, so even though the general evolution, yeah, so, so this kind of evolution, so, so this US is just, is a universal operator defined in the full series, so act on any operator in the boundary series. But of course it's action, it's explicit action will depend on specific boundary operator, okay? And uh, uh, um, yeah, for example, depend on the dimension, depend on the spin, et cetera, of the boundary operator. So, uh, so different, uh, uh, say, operator of different dimension, they transform differently. Okay. And then it turns out, if you look at the, uh, uh, the limit, the dimension is large. But the dimension is large, I always mean order one, okay, independent of n. So we always take angle to infinity limit. Yeah, so uh, uh, always consider large n limit. So, so if you take the operator dimension to be parametrically large, it turns out that this evolution becomes simplified. It turns out that this evolution can be interpreted as a bulk evolution, as a local bulk evolution. Okay, so uh, uh, so you just work out this transformation in the in in the boundary theory. Yeah, as I said, this phi x, you write it in terms of a and a dagger in the bulk, 
And, a, uh, and this A and A dagger of the bark also be interpreted as A and A dagger of generalized free field theory in the boundary theory. So that A and A dagger are, are identified. So now when you act this U on this phi, you get some complicated linear combination of A, a and A dagger. And it turns out when you take the large dimension limits and also if you for simplicity, let's average over the boundary spatial direction, it turns out that this evolution become a local transformation Okay, in the cross cut plane, in the cross cut plane, I, and then uh, 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 so this phi x x actually just become phi evaluated at some point x s. Okay, this x s turns out to be given by the following formula. So so in the u direction just translation, and in the v direction transform in this somewhat more complicated manner. So this v transformation can be heuristically understood as follows. So this transformation, say near the past horizon, say which V zero is equal to zero. So, so V does not transform. And then you just have a U translation. But the near the boundary, actually this transformation is precisely such that this takes a point on the boundary still remains on the boundary. Okay, it still remains on the boundary. And uh, so, yeah, so, uh, so now you can just, yeah, let me just show you the flow pattern generated by this transformation. So if you take a point and then, uh, and then just, just generate this kind of flow. Okay, if you take point in the box, generate flow like this. So you can also just take a Cauchy slice, this t equal to zero Cauchy slice in the box. And, uh, and then if you evolve by this us, and then uh, this is the Cauchy slice you get. Okay, so this is a constant s slice. And uh, so, so, so as we said, this will lead to smooth evolution uh, past the horizon. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. <clears throat> Good. So, so any questions? So this is just a summary. Uh, yeah, of course, as I mentioned, there are many other examples, and uh, and the different exam uh, a different use, of course, give you a different flow pattern, but uh, but but they all give you some of this kind of uh, 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 kind of smooth evolution, uh, and, uh, and by definition, they're all different morphism variables. So, so if if I don't average, I, maybe you said this and I missed it. If I don't average over the boundary spatial directions, do I get something non-local? Yeah. So that question, I don't know for sure. I think, uh, I, at least we don't know how to write it in a local form. <laughs> so, so this turns out to be a highly non-trivial exercise because the, you have this u acting on this phi, you get some very very complicated formula. Mm -hmm. And now you say, oh, can I reinterpret this formula in terms of some kind of bulk evolution? And now if I don't average over the boundary uh, directions, then I don't know how to rewrite it. But it turns out when I average over the boundary uh, 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 direction, say, and, and then only look at the, say, the evolution, the cross cut plane. And then it turns out, even though this is still a complicated expression, and then I can actually, I can repackage them in terms of this simple expression on the uh, gravity side the, uh, with this transformation group. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this is just a highly non-trivial exercise, which, yeah, uh, which uh, we don't know whether this happens or not yet, yeah. Thank you. Hmm. Good, okay. Uh, other questions? Okay, good. So, so, so now let me, before I tell you how to, uh, 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 how to generate this kind of structure, so let me just digress a little bit to talk a little bit about the uh, entanglement in quantum field theory. And that will give us a little bit inspiration how to generate such kind of flow. Okay. So, so yeah, let me just quickly say, say if you consider entanglement in quantum system, say normally we consider, say two, say suppose you divide your system into two subsystems, and then normally your Hilbert space has a tensor product structure with this Hilbert space associated with these two subsystems. And then you can construct reduced density matrix. And then you can construct Monuma entropy, uh, uh, or Rennie entropy or other uh, entanglement quantities, et cetera. Okay. And so that can be used to probe entanglement structure of your theory. Okay. But, but there's one case which something special happens Okay, say if, suppose if you can see the finite dimensional system and if row one and row two are both full rank. So row two is the similar thing you can construct by tracing over uh, the subsystem one. Okay, so when row one and row two are full, both full rank, 
Now it turns out there's a special structure. You can construct something like this for the modular operator. Say uh, just corresponding to rho two times rho one minus one. Okay. So this modular operator have the property that if you act on the operators in uh, in in system one, it still takes the operating system one within the operator system one. And if you act on the operating system two, still uh, uh, within the system two. Okay. So so by act we mean by you take the logarithm and then exponentiate it. So, so of course, the, in this case, this is a highly trivial uh, to see because because row one, row two commute with each other, and row two commute with anything in row one, then this just happens. Okay. But but the level of this this modular flow existence of the modular flow can be considered as the uh, alternative way to see these two systems are highly entangled. Okay, because when they full full rank, they are highly entangled. And now let's consider the entanglement in quantum field theory. So let's consider the QFT in Minkowski space time. So for simplicity, let's just consider the entanglement between, say, some right half space and left half space, and uh, and the uh, the causal uh, uh, completion of the right right half space is just the ring, ring to the right region, and then you have ring to the left region, then you have ring to the future and past region. So it's often said. In the Minkowski vacuum, if you're in the Minkowski vacuum, uh, uh, then, then the Minkowski vacuum can be of your double state between the right and the L. Window the patches, they're entangled, and that entanglement structure can be understood. Yeah, so this is the standard unruh story. But, but strictly speaking, this story is not quite true, okay? So, so strictly speaking, this statement is only correct in the discretized theory. So you have to put some UV cutoff. Say, for example, put your theory on the lattice uh, uh, because the otherwise you cannot make sense of this sum of your double state structure. Okay. So this distinction is normally not important. You can put just a short distance cutoff and then doesn't affect many of uh, our physical questions. But actually it, 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 for our discussion, the distinction will be crucial. Okay, so there are some fundamental differences between the discrete and the continuum case, which I will try to highlight. Okay. So let me just make a comparison between the discrete and the continuum, and let me just to highlight the difference between them. So in the discrete case, there's no coherent space for L and R. So this is just trivial because it's a lattice. Okay, we consider this a lattice structure. But 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 this is does not exist. So in the continuum case, there's no factorized structure between the right and the Hilbert, left Hilbert space. So so HR and HL don't make sense here. Okay. So uh, 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 in other words, just the states which can factorize between right and L, they have actually infinite energy. So so they don't exist in the, uh, in the continuum limit. And here then then accordingly you have reduced density matrix, but here you don't. Okay, because you don't even have a Hilbert space structure, say for the right region. And so here you have finite entangled entropy, even though it does, it, it depends on lattice spacing. But when you go to the continuum limit, uh, uh, the entropy is just not well defined. But what's remaining in the continuum limit is the modular operator and the modular flows. Okay, so, so, so this feature actually remains. So this is the way we know that actually the continuum theory is actually highly entangled, okay, in the in the uh, in the Minkowski vacuum state. But even in this case, uh, uh, there are a sharp distinction between the discrete and the continuum case. So so in the discrete case, as in the uh, example we discussed, this modular operator can be factorized. You can write it as a row two times row one minus one. But in this case, actually, you cannot. So, so this involves the right and left equals freedom in a highly complicated way. Okay. And uh, um, yeah, yeah, in some complicated way, it, it depends on the theory, okay. And also an important distinction is that in the discrete theory, actually there's no sharp light cone, okay. But, but there is sharp light cone, of course, in the continuum case, okay. In the discrete case, in the lattice, you always have some exponential tail outside the light cone. And uh, uh, um, yeah, so it turns out all these differences, okay, between the discrete and continuum case can be understood as in terms of the operator algebra structure, okay, in the right region. It turns out that the operator structure 
Always the algebra structure in the right division have some fundamental differences. And the differences can be uh, phrased in the simple mathematical language, okay? Is that in the discrete case, the overhead algebra in the right Windler region is actually so-called type one volume algebra. And for the continuum case, it's a type three one volume algebra. So we're not going to details how you define volume algebra or, or, or the classifications of uh, uh, volume algebra, et cetera, that will take too long. So let me just mention that the type one is the ordinary uh, operate algebra we are familiar with, which act on some Hilbert space, okay? So it's, the, it's just the operate algebra acting on some, uh, some Hilbert space. But type three one volume algebra are highly unusual, okay? So, so, so the, the classification of the volume algebra based on the, um, Based on yeah uh, yeah anyway uh, uh, so you can just view view those features as some kind of uh, uh, a manifestation of this type three one structure okay so if you have sharp light cone uh, cannot factorize etc okay. any questions on this okay good okay so so the story is actually general. So if you take any local region, okay, uh, the local operator algebra in the in the relativistic of T can can always be associated with some kind of type three one uh, volume algebra, and this is the only way actually we can uh, describe the uh, uh, yeah. So entanglement for local region can be understood in terms of modular flows and associates uh, associate with such a, a, a algebraic structure. So so the reason I'm going to to this story is that because this type three one volume algebra have a very special structure, which does not happen for any other type of the operator algebras. So this is so-called the half-sided modular translation and the uh, 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 inclusion structure. Yeah, so, so let me just first introduce some mathematical language. So, so let's just consider if we have some volume algebra and some vector which are cyclic separating for M. Okay, so let me just translate this story, uh, this statement for the Rindler case. For the Rindler case, you can just take M to be the, say, the operator algebra in the right Rindler region. So this vector will be just the vacuum. And the saying that this vector is cyclic and the separating respect to, uh, uh, for M is the statement, is essentially the statement of the Rich Schneider theorem. So Rich Schneider theorem says if you take the uh, operator algebra in the window of right region act on the vacuum, the resulting space of state is actually dense in the full Hilbert space. Okay, so that's called the cyclic properties. And the separating means that if you take the uh, uh, operator in in the right window region and acting on the vacuum, you level annihilates the vacuum. Okay, so this is called separating. Okay. Anyway, so, so cyclic and separating just will guarantee you uh, uh, that there's a modular flow. Okay, so, so cyclic and separating can be considered as a continuum version of, uh, of this, what I said earlier, that the row one and row two have full rank. Okay, if you have cyclic and separating, then that guarantees you have modular flow and the existence of modular operator. And now let's imagine, okay, now let's first consider you have volume algebra M. Now let's consider you have sub algebra N of M. Satisfy the following property is that first is that omega, uh, this vacuum, <clears throat> this state is also cyclic for n. Okay. And also, if you act the, the modular operator of m on n and involve it in the halfway, say take t smaller than zero, does not take it outside n, so remains in n. Okay. So this is called the half sided inclusion structure. Okay. Suppose such n exists. And then you can prove, okay, that, uh, uh, and then you can prove that then, then, then for type three, one, uh, uh, one imagine, but then there's a unitary group with the following property that you can construct operator G, which is bounded from below. Okay, so you can now construct this. And in particular, this will allow it, uh, will uh, leave your uh, uh, vacuum invariant. So as I mentioned earlier, any time you see some operator which is bounded from below, then that's a candidate for generate time, okay? 
then, then this is just the candidates for generate new times, okay? So, so, so this is some structure which is encoded in your quantum field theory, okay? Encoded in your quantum field theory. And uh, 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 somehow there's some kind of new time, okay? There's some kind of new time. So now let me just give you an example using this Rindler uh, uh, example, as you to see uh, uh, illustration okay, of I this. I have uh, a question. Yeah. Ask, uh, what uh, if uh, uh, your state uh, is not cyclic with respect to the subalgebra? What do you lose? I mean, uh, is, can you uh, have a part of this construction, uh, but maybe U is not unique uh, or you cannot do anything? You mean, you mean the... Uh, you, I mean, you, you choose a subalgebra and... Yeah, you mean this property is not satisfied. It is not cyclic. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. then, then, then you, you just don't... Yeah, you just don't have this structure. Yeah. You, you don't have uh, anything, okay. Yeah, uh, uh, you cannot show you have actually a time like uh, uh, a T. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thank you. So, and and is G, G is not unique, right? I think you said this at the beginning. So or G is, is unique once you have chosen your sub algebra, but 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 for different algebra, of course, you have different G. I see. Okay. Yeah. So later we will show you. It, it, it's uh, 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 It's possible to choose infinitely many different algebras generate different time. So for fixed subalgebra, G is fixed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me just give you an example to illustrate this thing. Okay. So now let's just again consider it's just one plus one dimensional of Minkowski space time is this window the right region. So now let's take the wind the, the operator algebra in the window the right region to be this M. Okay, I said earlier you have this. The operator algebra in the right region, and now, now the uh, the modular flow for this M is just the, the boost, okay, just the standard boost, and the boost will take the uh, the uh, the right, yeah, this uh, right window region within itself, okay, and now let's consider take the uh, the sub algebra N by by the by a shifted window region, okay, just uh, here. So, so, so obviously N is a sub algebra of M. And also it's easy to see under the boost of M in one direction, okay? If you do a boost of M of this night cone, and the N will remain itself uh, in the lactive direction, okay? Uh, it just, uh, uh, it just uh, take you down, okay? N remains itself. So this N then satisfies this so-called half-sided modular inclusion structure. Then that implies here, now there should exist a G to be greater than zero. Okay, to G to be greater than zero. And uh, 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 to be bounded from below. Of course, in this case, we know everything because it's just uh, Minkowski space time. It turns out for this example, okay, this G is just the time translation along the X minus direction. Okay, so this is, so this G essentially just a, 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 a light cone Hamiltonian. Just a light control. And of course you can do it, then you can choose some other algebra. Okay, then you can generate the time translation in X plus direction uh, uh, intrinsically, uh, yeah, uh, using the window algebra. Okay. So, 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 so this U constructed for, uh, for this choice of N, then I have the following property. If you take S smaller than zero, so you take M to itself, but of course, if you do a, a translation X minus direction, uh, 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 you, yeah, you just take M to itself. If you go one side, and in particular, you can take M to N, okay? But now if you take S greater than zero, and then that will shift M into that direction, and then that will generate, okay? The operator algebra actually in the future region, okay? If you take S greater than zero. So this way, you can actually generate the future and the past region from the algebra of the right and the uh, uh, left regions, okay? So in other words, if I just give you the operator algebra in the right and the left window region, and only give you a vac Minkowski vacuum state, okay? Just give you such algebraic structure and give you the Minkowski vacuum state, 
then I can actually construct the full Minkowski space time. Okay. Uh, uh, so if I just give you the Rindler region, I don't have Minkowski time. Okay. So here the Minkowski's time is emerging. Okay. From the Rindler time. Okay. So here, here I did X minus. So by choosing a lot of algebra, you can do X plus. And then when you, then you can superpose X minus X plus, and you can get arbitrary, say a, a Minkowski's time, a, a Lorentz boosted Minkowski space time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Minkowski time. Yeah. So, uh, so this is a highly powerful uh, uh, a result that, uh, that given just the Rindler algebra and the Rindler time, and then you can actually uh, generate Minkowski's time. So this is the way we are going to generate this Proustka-like time for the black hole story. Yeah, the story is very similar, okay. And so the key, okay, so uh, is you need to have type three one volume algebra and then some appropriate chosen sub-algebra for, uh, uh, for emergent time. Yeah. I think, Hong, I think uh, Carl has a question. Okay. Yeah, ju just a quick question. Do, did I understand this correctly that you have to choose this state omega? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And that is the Minkowski vacuum. So, so or, the state, I can talk about the state without talking about the, the Minkowski space time itself. Of course, uh, 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 of course, the uh, the simplest way we can talk about the Minkowski vacuum is to start with the Minkowski space time and the Minkowski time. But here I'm just saying, without starting the Minkowski space time and the Minkowski time, if I have knowledge of that state, then I can actually construct the Minkowski time. So how do you, if, if you just have given the, the, the operator algebra in this ring leverage, how yeah. do you how do you know what is uh, is this a unique state or would there be other states which would not allow you to reconstruct the good 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 yeah yeah so indeed this is uh, in the sense so so from the algebraic language the state is just a map of an operator to a number okay essentially you just uh, 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 it, you give me an algebra I can talk about the state. Which essentially just map all the operators uh, 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 um, in your algebra to to some number, okay. And so 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 if you give me the uh, Rindler right and the left algebra, so in principle I can construct this Minkowski vacuum by requiring certain symmetry properties, okay, uh, 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 symmetry properties, and uh, yeah, so so uh, 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 that state indeed is unique. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. but that has to do with the uh, uh, symmetries of the Minkowski. Yeah, yeah, because we know that there's underlying Minkowski space time here, yeah. So in the sense that the Rindler region already knows the full symmetry of the Minkowski space time. Yeah. So, uh, so this case is a little bit trivial. Okay, this case is a bit trivial compared to, compared to the black hole case, because in this case, the Rindler region even only if you only look at the window region, you can already, in the sense, all the symmetries of Minkowski space time is already hidden here. So if your state is compatible with that symmetry, if your state is compatible with those symmetries, uh, 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 which is in, uh, indeed the Minkowski vacuum state, and then and then uh, then you say it's not surprising you can uh, uh, construct the full Minkowski space time because you already have the symmetry. Yeah, that was <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 So the launch we're seeing uh, for the black hole case, which I emphasized earlier, uh, is that starting from BTZ black hole, there's no such symmetry. Okay. Yeah. For the JT gravity, if you do one plus one dimension gravity, then there, there are such symmetries. Yeah. But for higher dimensional black hole, there's no such symmetries. So in that case, it's more longitudinal. Yeah. So, so in, I, I'm, yeah. What if what if my space time really you know I, I take out some region of space in the future, and I want to call that my space time? Yeah, I put some boundary conditions there. How how will I see this in this will will this construction see or I do some orbifold somewhere? Yeah, will, will mm -hmm. the construction see this or I mean uh, will, so continuity state. So the yeah, it's you need two things, right? You need the uh, um. You need, yeah, uh, uh, let me not go back. Uh, uh, you need two things. You need 
the algebra itself, you need the states, and then you need the sub-algebra which satisfy the inclusion property. And then this will emerge. So, so if you just take arbitrary region, you may not be able to find such a sub-algebra. Yeah, so, so the fact that you can find such, uh, uh, such algebra is important. Okay, I, I need to think about this some more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the key is that you need, not only need to uh, have a type three by only my algebra, but you actually have these to have some kind of sub-algebra with, with the right properties. And then, then you can have emerging new time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this second aspect is highly non trivial It's not clear, yeah. Okay, so, so now with this non-motivation, so now I can talk about how you actually can construct this emerging time in the, in the, in the boundary theory uh, uh, in the, uh, for the black hole. So the black hole is described by CFT R times CFT L in the sum of your double states. So if we look at finite N, so, so now let's look at operate algebra just for the full operate algebra for the CFT R and for the CFT L, okay. So now if I had finite n, this bounded operator algebra structure is just type one. So they're just standard operator algebra acting on some Hilbert space. There's some Hilbert space associated with CFTR and CFTL. You just, so this operator algebra is just the standard type one. But, but in the infinite n limits, the story become highly non-trivial. Okay, so we want to argue actually in the infinite n limit, in the large n limit, <clears throat> So, so here you can think in terms of two things. You can either think of infinite n limits, or you think about n to be large but finite, but we are doing one of n expansion. Then what I said is true in in order by order in the one of n expansion. Okay, so you can either think of both ways. Okay. <clears throat> so we argue actually there's an emergent type three one volume algebra in the large n limit. And this monuma algebra structure leads to the emergence of sharp horizon and material and this all this emerging new time. So, so the quantity that you look at is actually a familiar quantity we often talk about in holography. So this is the algebra generated by single trace operators. So let's look at the say uh, algebra generated by single trace operator in the CFTR. So if you had finite N, if you look at single trace operators, they, they, um, they essentially just give you give you the full operator algebra for your full theory. Okay. But 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 in the infinite n, okay, but in the infinite uh, uh, and that would be type one. Okay, but in the infinite n, the structure is different. In the infinite n structure is different. So in the infinite n, there's also an emergent Hilbert space, not only uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so so in, in infinite n we define this operator algebra. By considering, say, product of single trace operators, of course, the uh, 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 the factor of the product not depend on n. Okay, yeah, single trace operators are defined by 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 anything which is independent of n. So here, there's also an emergent Hilbert. Uh, I have a, a question. Sorry. Okay. Uh, let, let's say that uh, you keep uh, uh, the first correction in one over n, such that the algebra now is type two. Okay. Do you think that there is a possibility of seeing uh, any way the structure of the horizon or, or, uh, or not? I mean, in this intermediate situation. Uh... No, no, actually order by order is not, uh, order by order is still type three. If you do order by order in one over N, say, so yeah. let's calculate to one over N to the 100 power. The structure will still be type three. Only when you include, include all one of n corrections. And then, yeah, as written argued, then, then you will have a Q structure. Yes, in that case, uh, is there a, still an horizon to be seen or do you think- In that case, we don't know. We don't, okay. Yeah, in that case, we don't know. We, because uh, 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 the how to think about that regime is a little bit tricky because you, you cannot do it order by order in one of n. You have to actually sum mm -hmm. over one of n structure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. For but, but for the type two algebras, does this con, does this uh, construction that you outlined does it work also? Is there a G and a unitary transformation? 
No, no, does not work. Uh, uh, uh only works for type three one. Okay. Yeah, only you. work for type three one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this structure will remain the order by order in Judutin, uh, uh, in the box. But once you sum over all G Newton corrections, then we expect maybe horizon structure will change, et cetera, yeah. <clears throat> okay, good. I'm sorry, so, can I ask about follow up to, to what Aldo mentioned earlier? Okay. So the, um, so I, what, what would happen when you, when you do the one away and correction because I thought like as as you mentioned that with, there's a follow up by Witten that mentioned if you do one away and correction then you, you you the algebra change from type three to type two yeah so oh. and, but we say that if you do the, all the sum over and correction then it, it's still type three yeah or... so yeah so my understanding is the following if you do order by order in one over n say this calculated to one over n say to fifth power. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 this structure will remain. This type three one structure will remain. And if you look at Witten's construction, then he actually needs to to have some of all one over n structure in order to have this type two. Uh, okay. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in his yeah in his uh, uh, construction, there's a subtle shift of n. Yeah, which yeah yeah. Good. Okay. So um, yeah. Anyway, so in the large limit, there's also a, a, a emerging Hilbert space. So this Hilbert space is also new Hilbert space. So this this Hilbert space is is rather intuitive. We normally talk about it. If you take a sum of your double states, and then you act finite products of single trace operator on the sum of your double states. And then of course, what you get is the small excitations around the sum of your double states, okay? And it turns out in the larger limit, you can actually show that actually this space have the Hilbert space structure, okay? You can do this rigorously, uh, so-called GNS Hilbert space. And uh, using this so-called GNS construction, uh, Gelfand, Neymark, uh, and the Siegel construction, uh, uh, and then, and then, uh, 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 then actually, this uh, uh, is a genuine Hilbert space. So now we can talk about the representation of this single trace operator algebra on this uh, uh, on this Hilbert space. So we call this M. Okay, we call this M the action of this AR in this Hilbert space. So 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 this operator algebra uh, they can similarly do ML. Okay, you can uh, uh, similarly do the single trace operator algebra in the left CFT. So now the now the proposal, okay, is that this MR and ML are type three one only algebras. So I emphasize these are operator algebra associated with the full CFT. Okay, and the single trace operator algebra generated by full CFT, not just some local region. And so this is the uh, a surprising uh, a three one uh, uh, volume algebra structure. So there's whatever supports for it. I don't mentioned in detail. So you can uh, talk about the structure of the spectral functions and you can talk, yeah, and then and then we show that actually you can uh, have half side module inclusion and translation structure for them. And then the last one is the most intuitive one is the duality with the box. Let me just mention this one. So, so let's just remind us the, uh, the in the box, say let's do perturbity to be in G Newton say in the G Newton goes to zero limit. And then essentially we have just quantum field theory in the curved space time. And then you just put it in G Newton, okay. So in this case, you can have the, say you can start with a Hutter Hawking vacuum around the black hole, and then you can construct physical excitations around the Hutter Hawking vacuum. So this is more excitation around black hole. So you have a Hilbert space structure. This is just the Fox space around the black hole. And then you have operator algebra for the Bach field in the right mineral re uh, in the right region of the black hole, and the uh, the Bach field algebra in the left region of the black hole. And the standard ADSAFT for the right and the left region that can be translated into the following language. Okay, it's just that we identify this GNS Hilbert space we constructed around the sum of your double state. With the black hole fox space, 
and then the this GNS vacuum, which is essentially the rep representation of the thermal field double states in the GNS uh, uh, Hilbert space uh, with the Hardo Hawking vacuum. And then you identify the operator algebra. So the right CFT right uh, operator algebra with the in the right region, etc. Okay, so so this is just the standard area CFT dictionary. We phrase it using this kind of uh, operator algebra language. And then, yeah, indeed. So you just have this correspondence and between the ML, ML tilde, MR tilde, and MR. And now we want to say, given this structure, how do you understand the future and the right, the uh, future and the past? Okay. And, uh, and so this M tilde and MR, they should be type 3 y monomer algebra because they are operator algebras in the Bach field theory associated with the sub region. Okay. Okay. Oh, we'll say here is sub region. So if the Bach picture is going to make sense, then they have to be a uh, three a uh, type three by volume algebra. So that means it implies this MR and L uh, 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 consistency with the duality. They have to be type three by volume algebra. Good. So so yeah. So so in order now to see this emerging time, now we have constructed. Now we have identified the type three by volume algebra in the boundary, and now we need to find the appropriate uh, volume and sub algebra, then we can have emerging time. So now let me just emphasize one thing is that where these theorems of half sided modular translations ensure the existence of such a US, okay, finding it explicitly in general is very, very difficult. It's an existence theorem, it's not a, yeah, it, 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 yeah, just it's very hard to write them down explicitly. But in the large n limit, we have some additional structure. So the, uh, in the large n limit, uh, the algebra of single trace open algebra, okay, in, in this uh, Hilbert space around the thermal field double state, can actually be described by that of a generalized free field theory, which we use all the time in ADSFT. Okay. So it turns out, in the uh, uh, using this generalized free field theory structure, even though it's still very difficult to construct this G. But it actually is not difficult to construct this US directly, how this US act on this uh, generalized free field theory. So, so in this case, we can actually uh, re determine the, how this US act on this generalized free field, okay, to a universal form up to some phase factor. Okay, so this phase factor will depend on specific operator you act on, will depend on specific theory you have or specific algebra you're looking at etc okay but but the uh, uh 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 yeah just say here you can actually, yeah uh, uh, this is a highly non-trivial statement which we uh, which i don't have time to explain okay but uh, but but this is something you can show okay anyway um, i i know that uh, um i promised to say uh, that you warn you like what the time is you had a right. lot of questions, so I, I don't want to interrupt you too much, but um, if you want to wrap up within maybe the next 10 minutes or so. Good, good. I should be able to do that, I think. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Good. So so, so, so now we just need to find this sub-algebra. Okay, but, but for the sub-algebra, let me just emphasize a very simple, but, the, but actually a profound point. So if you look, so let's look at the Cauchy, uh, uh, look at the uh, course of diamond. Okay, look at some Cauchy slice, say within this diamond, and then look at the operator algebra associated with those Cauchy slices, say a one, a two. So in the ordinary quantum field theory, the operator algebra uh, in a one, a two, they're just the same. Okay, so the time evolution, the Heisenberg evolution will take you, uh, will express any operator on a two in terms of a one and vice versa. So, so essentially, the, uh, the, the Heisenberg time evolution is uh, isomorphism uh, between these two uh, uh, algebras. It's a unitary transformation between these two algebras. Okay, and so, so they identify. But if you look at the algebra of the single trace operator, they're actually not the same. Okay, they're not the same. They are independent of each other. So the reason is that the, uh, uh, the Heisenberg evolution of single trace operator algebra, if you act on A1, if you evolve it by, uh, by say, N equals super theory, uh, yeah, you take N equals super Yamil theory, evolve by N equals super Yamil theory Hamiltonian, 
that take you outside the single trace overlay algebra. Okay, that take you outside single trace overlay algebra. So, um, so, uh, uh, um, yeah, so, so they actually in equivalent. Okay, so they actually in equivalent. So this is easy to understand from this generalized free field theory picture. So generalized free field theory pick, uh, uh, for generalized free fields, there's no ge generalized free field. They just defined for the full space time. There's no equation motion to take uh, the generalized free field from one slice to the other slice. Okay, they don't satisfy any equation motion. And uh, yeah, so uh, of course these two features are just uh, uh, related. Anyway, so this is, even though it's a very simple feature seen in the larger limit, but this actually gives you many new opportunities to construct sub-algebras. Sub so now we can construct emerging new time by taking advantage of this uh, uh, structure. So now let's consider the simplest case. Uh, let's just consider the boundary series, just one plus one dimensional CFT, say on the circle. So the, so the vertical direction is time. So the horizontal direction is spatial direction on the circle. So imagine this left and the right line are identified. So let's take the M. So as I said, the M, single trace over the algebra for the M is a, a, a type three by monomer algebra. And now let's look at the M, which is the over the algebra, say for the single trace over the algebra for T smaller than zero slice. Okay, so uh, so this orbit edge. So in the large N limit, these two algebra are in equivalent. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, but but the one who said if you do finite n, if you look at operate algebra for the full space time and then for the half space time, they're just equivalent because they're all trivially uh, 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 equivalent to the operate algebra on the single Cauchy slice. Okay, because you can all evolve them to a single Cauchy slice. But in the large uh, limit for the simple reason I mentioned, they're just independent algebras. And in particular, N is the sub algebra of M. Okay. And also the modular flow in the thermal state is just ordinary time evolution. And so you have side, uh, and then this N then satisfies this half sided modular inclusion structure. Then that Im implies we actually have emerging time uh, associated with this N. You can also look at some other sub-algebra. You can look at all the uh, sub-algebra, say, to the future of some time. You can also look at some more complicated. I don't have to choose. Uh, 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 yeah, I can choose some other time slice in the boundary theory and then look at operate algebra uh, uh, below some, some Cauchy slice, some curved Cauchy slice, or above some Cauchy slice. Anyway, so there are infinite number of such kind of emerging. And so now let me just tell you the simplest one. Okay, just say associate with this N uh, 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 corresponding to just below some time. Okay. So as I said, this uh, US, you can, uh, the action of the US on the generalized free fields, you can reduce it to finding a simple phase factor, uh, just your phase factor, which depends on your algebra, depend on your operator, et cetera. But finding that phase factor actually is a st still strongly coupled problem, even though this is generalized free fields. And but this generalized free field come from a, a strongly coupled theory. Okay. So, so here we can actually find this phase factor by using a lot of trick. So we propose, okay, so, uh, so we propose, so, so for that purpose, we want to generalize the concept of the entanglement wedge, okay? So normally in ADSFT, entanglement wedge are associated with the, uh, with the RT surface, say HRT surface, et cetera. Here we want to, Propose that if you look at the operator algebra in this n region, and the entanglement wedge for this operator algebra is the operator algebra in the n tilde region in this Bach region. Okay, just take the uh, this n region in the boundary and draw the causal wedge in the Bach, and then look at operator algebra in this Bach region then is n tilde. Okay, and then then the proposal is that the operator algebra here in the n tilde is identified with n. And now with this identification, now we can try to find this phase factor because, uh, uh, because until that is just generated by free field theory in the bulk, okay? In the bulk is really generating free field. So, so, so it turns out that the, this phase factor is given, 
say for a scalar field, this phase factor is precisely the one associated with the scalar field, uh, the, the phase shift of the scalar field at the horizon. So now imagine you solve the equation motion for scalar field outside the horizon, okay? And uh, so in the, using the standard story, you impose normalizable boundary condition at the future in the, in the boundary. And the, and the near the horizon and the, the scalar field behaves like plane wave, okay? Just, yeah, the plane wave in the total coordinate. And but there's a uh, uh, but there's a phase shift between these two plane waves, which go into infinity and come from infinity near the horizon. Okay. Uh, now, uh, uh, yeah, just in the uh, 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 going out of the horizon or going into the horizon. There's a phase shift. Turns out that phase shift is precisely the phase shift going into this U.S. Okay. Anyway, so so now you can just use that phase shift plug into this family of U.S. and now I can just do the yeah uh, uh, now I can just construct this U.S. Okay. And, uh, and this is the US I mentioned earlier, uh, the simplest one, which constructs this kind of trajectories, uh, of which I mentioned earlier, which on the past horizon just give you a U translation. And uh, you can also choose N, say, to be future uh, of some time slice. And then, 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 then we propose that it's dual to this kind of entanglement branch. And uh, then here you can find a different kind of flow. And so, uh, and then here uh, 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 at the horizon, it translates along the V direction. Okay. And, uh, and then uh, give you a flow like this. And you can also compose them. Okay, uh, so we call this uh, U type and V type flows. <clears throat> you can just arbitrarily compose them. When you compose them, you can just generate any flow, essentially any flow in the block. Okay. And uh, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I'm just running out of time. So let me just stop here. So if you have questions, I'm just happy to uh, uh, answer uh, uh, any questions. Yeah. <clears throat> First, thank you very much, Hong, and um, for a very inspiring talk with a lot of um, new impulses. So uh, there have been a lot of questions, but yeah, feel free to keep con like keep asking. So I, I have just one question. Uh, mm -hmm. So is this construction only valid on if I place my theory in uh, Minkowski space? Uh, no, no, no. This theory works for any boundary theory, whether it's in Minkowski space or on the sphere. Yeah, uh, actually works better on the sphere because in the Minkowski space, you have to uh, uh, you have to worry about the large volume limits in the boundary theory, and uh, yeah, yeah. So. So do it on the sphere. sphere. Don't I have a Hawking page uh, phase transition? Yeah. So this is above the Hawking page transition. Yeah. But internal that, is too, Yeah. But, but does that mean that if I'm in a theory that whose temperature is low enough, I won't have a type three one algebra? Yeah, you won't. Yeah, that's right. So is there a way to see this from uh, to see the phase transitions just by talking about the algebra of uh, yeah yeah field theory? Yeah. Yeah. So. So, so, so here, uh, previously I mentioned, I quickly mentioned that to see this type three, there's three perspectives, we can see it. So, so one perspective is the, uh, is the spectral function. So, so indeed, if, if below the, um, below the Hawking page transition and above Hawking page transition, the, the, the structure of the spectral function changes dramatically. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can see it from there. You can also see it from our, also, previous knowledge of the uh, how to describe the thermal field. Well, yeah, how to describe thermal states in the in in the below Hawking phase transition, and there you can also see it. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have another question. Sorry. Uh, okay. You say that uh, and there are uh, like an infinite uh, possible choices of subalgebras, right? And also in the bike, you can uh, evolve uh, your, let's say, your Cauchy slice uh, in an infinite uh, uh, number of ways. Uh, yeah. Do you expect that there, there is a, a precise mathematical correspondence between the possible flows and the possible subalgebras that we are uh, cyclic? cyclic uh, yeah, it's it's hard to say because because in the park, you can construct infinite number of flows, but you don't know whether those flows can be 
the corresponding to will have different morphism in the meaning. Uh, 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 we'll have different morphisms in right? meaning in the bulk. Uh, 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 I think that the difficulty in the bulk gravity is that I can, I can give you a flow. Somehow we feel that kind of flow must have, must contain some kind of genuine physics, but we just don't know what kind of physics that different morphisms in right? what are not, because we don't have such a tool to mm -hmm. actually Work, work in the interior in the park. We don't have a tool to, uh, uh, to, to understand how to construct diffeomorphic environment quantities. And so, so, so if you give me a flow, I cannot tell whether it's physical or not. So, so this construction somehow is intrinsic diffeomorphic environment. So that can potentially give you new observables, say in the park, which actually diffeomorphic environment, et cetera. And so, 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 yeah. So I would not think this actually will corresponding to every bulk flow. Maybe only a subset, which uh, uh, are different morphism variant, etc. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. But here yeah. you can already construct even even with this U and the V type flows. Even with homogeneous, yeah. The other type of flows I mentioned, uh, they are inhomogeneous in the spatial direction. Right. But but even for for homogeneous in the spatial direction. This U and V type flow, they're just spaces. You can still construct infinite number of them, but uh, by, by arbitrarily compose them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but arbitrarily compose them. And so, uh, so in the sense, you, uh, you already have infinite number of them, but whether they are more, et cetera, we don't know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, um, do you have any evidence that the, um, the vacuum is cyclic uh, with respect to the subalgebra, or uh, it is just a, a conjecture? Sorry, say it again. You say the vacuum is what? Uh, cyclic. Cyclic. Oh, yeah. So in this case, we do know because the because here we have uh, some of your double uh, here the vacuum is the sum of your double states. So some of your double state, we do know that actually is cyclic with respect to the operator algebra in the right uh, uh, CFT and left CFT uh, for the single trace operator. Yeah. Yeah, that we do know. Okay, thanks. So what we usually do is we um, finish the recording and then um, have some informal part of the discussion if people still have steam. So I suggest if there are no urgent questions that need, need to be recorded, then I would suggest to thank Kong again. Thank you very much. And also everyone who, who uh, contributed to the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, thank you, everyone. Uh, and see you yeah, next thanks. week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Wang. Bye. Yeah.